come to night in Cape Town. Not that cold, but winter is creeping up on us. So welcome and be blessed and we believe and trust the Lord that you will have a good time with us tonight. And we're going through the word of God and uh, we know that there was a prophetic word given by the end of April uh, for 60 days, an open window. God is opening the heavens above us for 60 days where there will be a special anointing for wealth transfer. So I'm going to speak on it because there are certain things that are very uh, essential that we need to know. And that is, um, when is the word um, appropriate? When is the word, is it from God? Is it not from God? I do believe there's still the prophetic word of God that is able to come to pass. Um, it, we need to understand the word of God. We also need to trust God that his word will come to pass. That is very, very important. I just want to read to you um, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20. <coughs> and uh, we just before we're going to go and read the word, I'm just going to release a prayer. Father, we thank you that your word is anointed. Yes. Thank you that the Holy Spirit will illuminate your word unto us and to every hearer. This is your word and we trust the word from the beginning to the end from genesis to revelation whatever is written will come to pass we know that jesus is the living word we know that the word of god cannot fail we know that the word of god is eternal heaven and earth will pass away but your word will never pass away we give you praise we give you glory we magnify your name. Amen. Amen. Now in Second Peter chapter 1 verse 20, the Bible said, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private inter interpretation. Um, what is private interpretation? Like, for instance, private interpretation is, beloveds, if we go to the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11, then, and it says that God placed in the church and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Now, what is private interpretation? If I come and tell you this scripture is not relevant today, it was only for the Old Testament or for the beginning of the foundation of the church 2,000 years ago. It means it is my interpretation of the word. To me, my interpretation of the word is this. What God says in his word, that is what stands. It doesn't matter your opinion, doesn't matter my opinion. Whatever the word of God says, stand forever. There's nothing, your opinion and my opinion will never change the word of God. So the Bible said he gave some in the church to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. Who plays? God plays. So my interpretation is not that the apostles, the time with uh, when the apostles of old died, that the ministry of an apostle passed away, the ministry of a prophet passed away, it means that the word of God stand forever. As long as we walk upon the earth, there will be apostolic dimension, there will be prophetic dimension, there will be a, an evangelistic teaching and pastor dimension in the body of Christ. And then um, the Bible also said that he give gifts unto men. He gave gifts unto men. So what is a gift? Now, 
the fivefold ministry gave is a gift of the ministry of Jesus that he placed upon the fivefold ministry. Uh, it's a special gift that he gave unto the church. So he placed it on men that he called and anointed for this for that purpose and for that time. Now a lot of people are very um how will I say they accept the ministry of a teacher, they accept the ministry of an evangelist, they accept the ministry of a pastor, but they totally reject the ministry of the apostle and of the prophets. <coughs> uh, contrary to that belief, I believe everything that is written in the word will come to pass and it stays. Um, now, in verse 21, he said, For prophecy never came by the will of men, but by holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So every prophetic word must be driven by the Holy Spirit. It must be an impartation, the work of the Holy Spirit, the prophetic gift uh, upon my life that is operating must be the work of the Holy Spirit. The office of a prophet is a result of the ministry of Jesus where we represent Jesus the prophet, Jesus the apostle, Jesus the evangelist, Jesus the teacher and the pastor. So it represents Christ upon the earth. But the gifts of the Holy Ghost like the prophetic gift that function, the miracles that function in the life of a believer, it is the work of the Holy Spirit. So the office of a prophet is a function and represent Christ upon the earth. So that is very important that we need to understand what the Word of God says. And uh, another thing that is very important, beloved, it is in Revelation chapter 1 verse 3, the Bible said, God bless the one who reads the word of this prophecy to the church and he blesses all who listen to its message and obey what it says for the time is near. Which basically means, beloved, when the Bible in the book of Thessalonians tells me, do not despise prophecy. So if you say the prophetic word that is given uh, the, the office of a prophet has been taken away, has been removed, then you de despise prophecies. Um, it is very important to know when there's a true prophetic voice on the earth, Jezebel's voice will arise because it will counter the pro true prophetic voice that's upon the face of the earth. So it's a demonic spirit that will rise up and say, no, you are not of God. You are false prophet. It doesn't exist. Why? Because Jezebel's spirit loved to kill the apostles and the prophets. It is their job, the scripture, to destroy what is of God. And some of them believe they are of God, but we know it is not true. In Matthew chapter 10, 41, the Bible said, if you receive a prophet, <coughs> in the name of a prophet, you will receive a prophet's reward. If you receive a righteous man in the name of a righteous man, you will receive a righteous reward. So there's a reward in receiving the man who carried the message. Who gave this word? Jesus gave the word. It didn't come from the apostles. It came from Jesus. He said, as you if you receive a prophet, as one who speaks for God, you will be given the same reward. So there's a reward in believing the prophetic word. Now, it is very important that we need to understand that we need to believe the prophets. We need to believe that the word of God is true. The written word. And I said before, um, a, a prophetic word will never violate the written word of God. Like, for instance, if I come to you and I prophesy that you need to divorce your wife or your husband, 
because God said it, then it's not the word of God. It's against the word of God because the word of God doesn't tell me to divorce somebody. Um, it is very important that we take the word of God as our guideline. That is the one way how we discern a prophetic word. Is it in line with the word of God or is it against the word of God? If it's in line with the word of God, surely the source must be from God. And another thing is, how do you discern a false prophet? A false prophet will operate with, from a counterfeit spirit. There will be a counterfeit spirit operating in the false prophet's life. I mean, it is sad if you go on to um, all the media outlets that are there, the YouTube and Facebook and all, uh, you, some are in their circles are great preachers and some are no preachers. They just don't have a ministry. They don't, uh, souls are not saved under their ministry. Some people, souls are saved. But then they come and they counter where God is moving upon people's life, those who move in the prophetic, those who sign, see signs and wonders and miracles, those whom God use in a mighty way, then they place the demonic seal upon their lives. I want to say, beloved, that is totally, utterly demonic. Um, we can fight about it. But I'm not interested in fighting about it. I'm just going to state the truth of the word of God. That's why we got to stand upon the word of the living God. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20, the Bible said early the next morning, the army of Judah went out in the wilderness of Tekoa. On the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, Listen to me, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. The number one function of, of someone is that he is a child of God is to make people believe that the Lord is God. To prove that he's God of our lives. When signs, wonders, and miracles are happening, when the prophetic word come to pass, it is to show that God is God of our life. But our response to the prophetic word is also important. How do you respond to the prophetic word? Listen to me, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you will be able to stand firm. Believe in his prophets, and you will prosper. That is what the one translation said. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20. We need to understand that this is the word of God and we have to believe the word of God. I don't care about your doctrinal issues or where you come from. Um, you, don't, I, you don't believe in speaking in tongues. Thank God for those who doesn't speak in tongues come from a background. They don't speak in tongues but they they understand what is going on. So God is going to bless you. God is going to increase you. God is going to manifest his word upon your life. But for us that believe in what the word of God said, that we should pray in the spirit, we should pray in our understanding. And when you pray in the spirit, your mind is unfruitful. I can take out that scripture and read it to you. So there's a special prayer that we're going to pray, that we need to understand that we have to pray so that God's word can be fulfilled in our life. The reason for the prayer is to properly discern and receive a true, true prophetic voice or word because the word of God is our ultimate standard. We've got to believe God. Yes, is there false prophets? Yes, there are people that will pretend they are prophets, but they're not prophets of God. That's why you need the gift of the sermon of spirits in your life. It's like uh, <clears throat> people will, will come and tell you, no, I don't believe in the prophetic, I don't believe in this, or I reject your prophetic word and blah, blah, blah. 
At the end of the, of the day, beloveds, if the word was from God and you reject it, the Bible said, do not despise prophecy. We got to discern by the word of God and through by the gifts of the Holy Spirit if the prophetic word is true over your life. What is the source of the prophetic word? Is it the Holy Ghost or is it the devil? The devil can use people as the Holy Spirit is using people. You could be a vessel of honor or it could be a vessel of disgrace. You have to stand upon the word of the living God. And we need the, the gift of discernment of spirit. We need to have our ears and our eyes open so that we be able to know if it's of God or not. Now, the more you pray in the spirit, the more you meditate upon the word of God, the more you believe God's word, the greater the gift will function and operate in your life, whether it's any of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. So if you don't press in, believe God, and trust God, the more you yield to the Spirit of God, the more you obey the Word of God, the more you meditate upon the Word of God, the more you pray in the Spirit, the greater the gifts of God will function in your life. Now there's one prayer that we're going to pray and I, I said this prophetic prayers is about that we as believers should be able to, 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 to believe God for this wealth transfer that's coming a 60 day window. Does it mean after that it's not going to happen? No, it's, it doesn't mean it. It is just a specific special uh, anointing that God will release. And you know, one thing I know, if we miss God's opportunity, it might take you 10 years or a lifetime just to get back. And it costs you, how will I say, it will cost you to put in more. You will have to go after it. It's harder, it's more difficult. It's like the time when I was in the poor gospel church in Belgravia, there was such a beautiful anointing. I gave this uh, testimony before, but there are many that didn't hear it. That's why I give it, because it needs to be a blessing. And uh, that time of my life, I minded my own business. I, you know, go to church when I feel like or whatever. And this night I was in this church and the, Church was full, evening service. There was such an, an anointing in that place. And while praying in the Holy Ghost, a cloud came in and I heard the voice of the Lord said, Lionel, do you want it? And, you know, through your mind, many thoughts were going and I must give up this. I have to walk the walk. I must pay the price. And while I was still thinking, the cloud lifted. It cost me um, years of, of, of pressing and fasting just to start moving in what God wanted to give in a moment of time. So now this is a prophetic word that is coming. So if you don't receive it with a proper heart and spirit, you might miss it. So I prepare my heart, I prepare my life, I believe God, I speak on it, I refuse to doubt. What if it doesn't happen? It doesn't mean the word of God is not true, beloved, because multitude others will be blessed. But I'm going to trust God anyway. I'm going to believe God anyway. I'm going to believe that the word of God is true and nothing can stop it. The devil cannot stop it because God is about to break the yoke and the curse of poverty. For two years, the enemy tried to destroy the church of the living God and he wants to pour out his finances upon the church so that the church can be the solution to the world and to our circumstances. 
There's a prayer that I want us to pray, and we're going to pray together. <coughs> Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, as I pray now, as I pray now, let the Holy Spirit, let the Holy Spirit, the revealer of truth, the revealer of truth, begin to confirm Your Word in my life. Begin to confirm your word in my life. Give me an ear to hear. Give me an ear to hear. Give me an eye to see. Give me an eye to see. Give me a heart to receive. Give me a heart to receive. That the word of God. That the word of God is true in my life. Is true in my life. No deception. No deception will take place in my life. Will take place in my life. I will believe the word of God. I will believe. Give me tonight, Give me tonight a, discerning heart a discerning heart to receive your word. To receive your word. Do not let me miss this divine opportunity. Do not let me miss this divine opportunity. Help me, O Lord. Help me, O Lord. So that your name, so that your name will be blessed and be glorified. Will be blessed and be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty now, name. This is one prayer. If we were in a prayer meeting, I would have prayed this prayer. Everybody would have prayed this prayer with me. We would have prayed in the Holy Ghost. I love praying in the Holy Ghost. It's one of the most powerful ways to pray. Why? Because you activate the supernatural. You release the unction of uh, angels over your life. The anointing of the spirit of the living God over your life. The more we pray, the more God will answer. Now the next thing that we're going to talk about, what to do when you have lost everything. Now we have to go and take the Bible as a way of, of, of believing him that he can do it again. Now, there are biblical examples where God came through for the Israelites. And at one time in 1 Samuel chapter 30, 18 and 20, David got back everything the Amalekites had taken and he rescued his two wives. David and his men lost everything. His wife was taken, his uh, property was taken, his animals was taken, his men's animals, and they wept, they, they cried, and the, uh, his soldiers wanted to stone him, blame him for their calamity in their lives. And sometimes we get into that place where people blame you for things that happen. Busy with the master's work, the enemy came, you lost your family, you lost your finances, you lost your business. But there's a way that we can recover all. He also recovered all the flocks and herds, and his men drove them ahead of the other livestock. This plunder belonged to David, they say. Now, the plunder belonged. Why? They went after what was taken. You cannot sit back. And allow the enemy to take, steal your family, steal your finances, steal your children and get away with it. You've got to go after it. Even if it's in the realm of the spirit in aggressive prayer and said, devil, whatever you took from me, my family, my finances. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's a lifetime of finances that's been stolen. But by the power of the might of the living God, we break the power of the enemy. We destroy the power of the enemy. Whatever the enemy has stolen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Um, uh, be restored. Be restored. Be restored. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There's a scripture in the book of Joel. And uh, we're going to. In the book of Joel. Where the Bible talks about, you know, uh, when the enemy took and stole, that you will restore what the caterpillar has stolen from us. 
So God is a restorer. He wants to restore everything that the enemy has stolen. And I, in uh, uh, second, in Joel chapter 2, verse 20, 25, And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. It means something was stolen. I will restore to you what the locusts have eaten. The canker worm and the caterpillars and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you, and you shall eat plenty. So restoration is part of the believer's um, benefits. Whatever the enemy has taken. There, there are people that are crying today because their, their, their joy has been taken through financial lack, through suffering. They suffered. But the Lord said, I will restore. I will give you back. Now in Jeremiah 49, verse 31 to 32, the Bible said, go up and attack that complacent nation, says the Lord. <clears throat> if people live alone in the desert without walls or gates, their camels and other livestock will all be yours. I will scatter to the wind these people who live in remote places. I will bring calamity on them from every direction. But somebody said, this is, has to do with people now. But the main thing here is, beloved, go and attack. A man might have taken it, but it was inspired by demonic powers. So tonight we're going to stand up. We're going to say, devil, no more will you take from my finances. No more will you steal from my finances. No more will I be robbed from you. I'm here and I take back. Some of you might have lost millions. Some of you might have lost houses and businesses. Right now, what you need to do is say, name it, and begin to pray and say, Lord, the enemy has stolen from me, and I'm here in the courts of heaven, and by the power of the might of God, I go against every altar, that is raised up against my divine destiny, that took my money, that took my joy, my peace, uh, my health. I'm going to take it back. Uh, I'm taking it back right now. And every power that is raising up, uh, uh, that are raised up against my life, will be destroyed, will be scattered in the name of Jesus. Doesn't the Bible tells me in the book of Deuteronomy, the enemy will come in one way and will flee seven ways. I think it's verse seven, will come in one way, will flee seven ways. Tonight, in the mighty name of Jesus, every power of the enemy will be broken and be destroyed. In Exodus chapter 11, verse 2, the Bible tells, um, it's, uh, 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 Moses said unto the people, listen, tell all the Israelite men and women to ask the Egyptian neighbors for articles of silver and of gold. Ask. The right word was demand. Said, give it back. I've been a slave for 400 years. I want retribution. I want what I have sown in this land, I want it back. It was taken from me. My hard labor, my slavery is over. Tonight we need to make a declaration. Our time of slavery is over. Our time of lack is over. Devil, you took from us. Devil, you stole from us. Right now, I take my place of authority in the kingdom of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will give back what belongs to me in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the book of Numbers, chapter 31, verse 32, the plunder remaining from everything the fighting man had taken, talented 700 
thousand sheep and goats. So they took what was taken, the plunder remaining. It means, beloved, what they have plundered was taken, which basically mean that was the plunder is actually, beloved, it is, how will I explain it now? You have already got what you lost. But this is now the extra. This is now the bounty. This is now the reward of warfare. So there's always a reward when we war against the powers of hell. When we war against the powers of hell, there is a reward. So everything sent for the last 30 years, 40 years, 20 years, 10 years that the enemy and held me captive, held you captive, hold your finances in bondage. Right now, I take back my finances and I will have a bountiful Father in the name of Jesus. I thank you for increase. I thank you, Lord, for increase. We take back tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, the reason for the prayer was whatever the enemy has stolen, now to recover through warfare prayer, pursue, overtake, recover all, and divine restoration. Divine restoration. Divine restoration is your portion. Um, <clears throat> and this prayer will be like, Whatever the enemy has stolen from me from birth, you can pray it with me. Whatever, Whatever. the enemy has stolen me from birth, as I pray now, by fire and by force, and by the sword of the Lord, and by the power of the word of God, I remove my prosperity. My wealth, my wealth, my health, my, health, my, family, my family, from any power holding me them captive, from any power holding them captive, I pursue, I, pursue, I overtake, I recover all, all, and everything is restored, that was stolen from me right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, I break and destroy every power, holding my prosperity captive, holding my health captive, holding my family captive. I command you now, let them go. Let them go, Let them go in, the name of Jesus. in the mighty name of Jesus. Then we pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in tongues, and thank the Lord for a victory. Thank the Lord for answering your prayer. Always pray in tongues after you pray the prayer. Then you uh, thank the Lord for victory. You give him praise. You thank him. Yes. You magnify his name. You glorify his name. Can we just pray for a few seconds in the Holy Ghost? Especially for those people that don't like it. Robo satana la manda la ba corbonda di atana la mandia. Robba can la corbonda di atana la mandia. Robba satana la manda la ba corbonda di atana la mandia. Robo satan la manda la ba corbonda rabba kan la corbonda la ba carbonda robo satan la manda rabba kan la corbonda di atan la manda rabba kan la corbonda father we thank you for answering our prayer tonight we recover all everything restored nothing missing nothing broken nothing lost Everything restored. Everything restored. And araba karaba sete nala mandia. Robo sata nala mandia. Robo kon la karaba nala bakurbondia. 
Rabakanla Kurbondia. Father, we honor you. We praise you. We magnify your name. We glorify your name. We exalt your holy name in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Now, I'm going to talk about wealth transfer. Um, we know there was a prophetic word given. Now, Paul said to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 18, Timothy, my son, here are my instruction for you based on the prophetic words spoken about you earlier. May they help you fight well in the Lord's battle. You know, a prophetic word that was given was the Lord's battle. So the prophetic word used it as a weapon of war. Let me just read what uh, the other translation is saying because uh, it might read just a little bit different. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you make the good warfare. So we use the prophetic word as a weapon of war to get what we want. The prophetic word was given. We fight with the prophetic word. We believe the prophetic word. We believe somebody is going to testify. Because for every prophetic word, there's an opposition to that word. Because if that word comes to pass, what is going to happen? It will cause havoc in the kingdom of darkness. That's why I love the prophetic. Um, <coughs> it is important, beloved, for when wealth transfer takes place, it is to obey the word of God. We have to believe the word. It must be in line with the word. Anything else contrary to the word of God must be rejected. Understand that the word of God is our standard, not the opinion of man. Now in Deuteronomy chapter 1 to 7, uh, if you fully obey the word, the Lord your God and keep, carefully keep all his commandments that I've given you, the Lord your God will set you, set you high above all the nations of the world. You will experience all these blessings if you obey the Lord your God. Your towns and your fields will be blessed. Your children and your crops will be blessed. The offspring of your herd will be blessed. Your fruit basket and bread basket will be blessed. Wherever you go, whatever you do, you will be blessed. The Lord will conquer your enemies and they will, when they attack you, they will attack from one direction, but they will scatter in seven. Mm -hmm. Divine promise of the word of God, blessings. During this pandemic, for the last couple of years, many people, um, believers, their finances were destroyed. The enemy lay siege upon their lives. But we, as the Believers need to stand upon the word of God, believe the word of God, trust the word of God, and believe that the word of God is true forever. Now, uh, in Psalm 112 verse 3, the Bible said that wealth and riches will be in this house. It's a promise from God. You will be called the priest of the Lord, ministers of our God. You will feed on the treasures of this nation and boast in their riches. This is a scripture specifically that talks about wealth transfer. Isaiah 45 verse 3, I will give you the treasures in darkness, a secret riches. I will do this so you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, the one who calls you by name. How many of, of our 
churches and our people suffered during this time. And the Lord said, I will give you the hidden treasures in darkness, secret riches in hidden places. I will give it to you. I will give it to you. It means there will come a revelation. I will do this so that you may know that I am the Lord your God. How many knows that he is Lord our God? I want to know him as Lord and God of my life. Not only in salvation, because in salvation, I'm going to heaven. But in salvation, there's also healing. There's also restoration. There's also redemption. There's also deliverance. There's also prosperity. So salvation is not only for heaven, but salvation is also for the earth life. Isaiah 61 verse 6. You will be called the priest of the Lord. Ministers of our God. You will feed on the treasures of the nations and boast in their riches. You will boast in the riches of the nations. It's a wealth transfer, beloved. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 19. It is a good thing to receive wealth from God and the good help to enjoy it. To enjoy your work and accept your lot in life. This is indeed a gift from God. When wealth is transferred, it is come from God. God is the owner of wealth transfer. He's the one that will transfer the wealth unto you. The word of God is eternal. The word of God is true. The word of God cannot be changed. The word of God is trustworthy. The word, word of God is purified sevenfold. We have to believe the word of God. Now, there's one scripture that I am, and I'm going to close with this, and we're going to do a prayer. Go up and attack that complacent nation, says the Lord. Its people live alone in the desert without walls or gate. Their camels and their livestock will be yours. I will scatter through the wind these people who live in remote places. I will bring calamity on them from every direction, says the Lord. Jeremiah 49, 31 to 32. Go up to the wealthy nation. Go up. Go up. The wealth of the riches is laid up for the righteous. The wealth of the riches are laid up for the righteous. A wealth transfer. God wants to transfer it unto his people, unto his church. The enemy got away with him for a long time. We're going to believe God tonight that the power of hell will be broken. The power of the enemy will be destroyed over your life. You will experience the riches of God. You will experience the blessings of God. We're going to pray tonight that the wealth of the, rich, of the riches and the wealth and the riches of this world that is laid up for the righteous will come back to the church in the mighty name of Jesus. We have to stand upon the word of God. We have to take charge of the word of God. We have to believe the word of God, that the word of God will come. It will be established upon your life that God will do what no man can do. What a privilege that God gave us this word that wealth will be transferred. I've got a prayer point and uh, we're going to pray that prayer tonight and that will be our last um, it will be our last prayer point and then we can do it again tomorrow night because it's 
sometimes better to repeat certain prayers and pray it continuously. Tomorrow night we will pray it with the church and we believe and trust God that his word will come to pass upon our life. We're going to thank him tonight. Scripture confirmed there's a wealth, transfer wealth for the believer, finances, business, houses, also land to possess. I got different scriptures that we can do, do tomorrow night, but we will pray the same prayer point tonight in our prayer meeting and we're going to believe God. There are powerful scriptures where God said, can I just give one? First Chronicles chapter 16, 18, I will give you the land of, the, of Canaan as your special possession. Canaan, the Gentiles live in it. Demonic powers control it. Giants live in it. But the land was so fruitful. The grapes were so big and uh, so huge. Two men had to carry it on their shoulder. Today we go to the, to the shop and we buy grapes and it's just in a little bit. If you go to um, the other shops in, 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 in town, and it's 20 rand. I, it all depends where you are. 22 rand. You go to lo uh, locally at home, the Sparta shop, you can get it for 10 rand. But it's just a little bit. You alone finish it in five minutes. <clears throat> so he said, I will give you the land as Canaan as your possession. It was a promise as your possession. Because it's the land that was promised unto Abram, Isaac, and Jacob as an inheritance. God gave the church dominion over the earth. Don't tell me you have dominion and you're so poor that the poor people call you poor. We cannot and refuse the spirit of poverty. And there are people that want to keep us in bondage and we refuse to be in bondage. Our prayer point tonight is Lion of the tribe of Judah. Everyone, Lion, Lion of the Lion tribe of, of Judah. Judah. Everyone, Lion of the tribe of Judah, as I begin to pray, as I begin to pray, every word spoken of wealth transfer, every word spoken of wealth transfer, will come to pass. Will come to pass. The wealth of the wicked, the wealth of the wicked, is transferred into my life. Is transferred into my life by the supernatural hand of God. By the supernatural hand of God. Let divine judgment. Fall. Let divine judgments fall on the powers of darkness, on the powers of darkness. and let the hands that are holding back my wealth be roasted by fire. Any land, Any land. Property. property, or business, or business. Remove, be removed from the hand of the wicked. Be removed from the hand of the wicked. That belongs to me. That belongs to me. I take possession of it. I take possession of it. In the mighty name of Jesus. 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 I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you glory. Can we just pray in the Holy Ghost for a few seconds? Rabba Satana la manda la bacurbona di Atana la mandia Rabba Satana la mandia Rabba can la curbona la bacarabandia Rabba can la curbona la bacarabandia Rabba can la curbona la mandia Rabba can la curbona la bacarabandia Lobo can la curbona di Atana la mandia Robo satana la manda la bacurbondia, rabba kad la curbonda la mandia, rabba satana la mandia, robonda riatana la mandia, rabba kad la curbonda la bacarabandia, robonda riatana la mandia, rabba kad la curbondia. Father, we give you praise, we give you glory. 
We thank you for answering our prayer. We believe your word tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. We honor you and we praise you. Amen and amen. Beloved, there's some uh, requests that we need to pray for. Charlie, one year old, leukemia. Uh, it's a young Young boy, we prayed for 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 him yesterday. Lena, stage four cancer. Sheila of Lesotho, pain in the legs, and he's past cuppers. We believe God for him. He's eighty-seven years old, and God carried him. He can carry him uh, another couple of years. We thank the Lord for His mighty hand of past cuppers. Thank you for His healing, your healing power over over his life. I pray for Sheila of the Sutu, every witchcraft power, every power of a spirit of infirmity operating in her life right now. I break it. I destroy it. I command the demon of witchcraft loose and let her go in the mighty name of Jesus. I command the pain to go. I command the spirit of fear to go. I command the spirit of witchcraft to go in the name of Jesus. I thank you for healing and I thank you for deliverance in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we pray for Lena, stage four cancer, your demon of cancer and hell, your spirit of death and hell, your demon of death and hell. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command the demon come out of her bones, come out of her blood, come out of her body. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command the blood cells to form healthy blood cells. In the name of Jesus, every organ that's been touched, I command that demon of cancer dislodge yourself from that body in the mighty name of the Lord. Be set free and be made whole. Be set free and be made whole. We pray for little Charlie, you devil, you foul spirit, your wicked spirit, your spirit of death and hell. I command you, your demon of leukemia, I command right now, Loose and let Charlie go. I pray right now for bone marrow, sir. Brand new bone marrow, sir. Create a miracle in his body right now. Brand new bone marrow to be formed. In the name of Jesus. Loose and set him free tonight. Loose and set him free tonight. Loose and set him free tonight. In the name of Jesus. Brand new blood cells. Brand new blood cells. In the name of the Lord. There's somebody with a similar condition right now. In the name of Jesus. You struggled for the last couple of years with leukemia. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of hell over your life. Be delivered. Be set free. I break your power. I command you. I command you in the name of Jesus. Christ of Nazareth, loose and let her go, loose and let her go, loose and let her go. I Nendala Bakarobundia. Father, I pray let your mighty hand come upon her. Loose and set her free, my Lord. Set her free right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen, <coughs> amen and amen. Beloveds, thank you tonight for watching. Tomorrow night, um, we won't be on, on 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 Wednesday because it's Freedom Day. We're going to celebrate our freedom that's been given to us for the last 2,000 years. Amen. Even in lockdown, we have, were free to serve God. Our souls uh, were in bondage, where even when Peter was in jail, he was a free man. Why? His spirit was free. So we thank God for his redemption. So tomorrow night we will meet again. 
Remember our camp. Remember our camp. Don't miss the camp that is coming up in, in Felder. It's going to be powerful. God is going to do something supernatural. We believe God. Many lives will be changed. Many hearts will be changed. In Jesus mighty name. Be blessed. Remember our book um, that is available, The Power of Prayer Against the Power of Darkness. So um, it will be a blessing to you and God will really increase you. God bless you. Amen.